Morning, folks. Hope you're having a good day and a good week. I'm sitting here in my uh, office, um, which is kind of fun because uh, we've stayed overnight in Adair two nights now. And uh, I just kind of hop on over here and uh, get work done during the day. And so it's really kind of fun. We're settling into a, a new place and uh, a new environment, new rhythms and uh, finding a lot of joy in it and looking forward to the future. So thank you to all of you who have welcomed us as all of you have in a variety of different ways. And it's a huge blessing. And so I wanna say thank you from our family. It means a lot to us. Um, this is a, a big move for us coming out here to Adair, but one that we look forward to and one that I, trust will have uh, a long future ahead of it. So thank you. Uh, you'll see me and us around town more often. And uh, uh, hopefully more good things to come as uh, we settle in and uh, I uh, start to organize this crazy office here. So I still got books to organize, but here's to a good start. So this is a resurrection letter number two. And uh, here we go, from me to you. Dear friends, as many of you know, we've moved this past week. We're still settling in the mess, but we're in the house, and it's good to be out here. One of our first encounters, as we were just starting to move in some boxes, was with our neighbor, Daryl Gettler. Many of you might know him. He's been in the area and in his house next to ours for quite a while. And as a neighbor, he's kept an eye on the house we're occupying for a while. He knows about the house. He knows the area. He can tell us all sorts of stories about who's lived in the house, who lives on the block, stuff about the town. We had this sort of experience with quite a few other people as well. Roger and Kathy Metzger, Cheryl Williams, Connie Littler. I could name more and more. They all know our house too. They know the area. And it's actually quite comforting and good to hear this familiarity with our house and the area that we're moving into and this town. And it occurred to me that though we're new, we're moving into a known place. At some point, we plan on being not new. Though I suspect in a town like Adair, unless you were born there and unless your parents were born there and your grandparents were born there, you're always going to be new to some degree. And I think it's important to notice this. But it occurs to me, like I said, we're coming into a known place. We're coming into a place that's not ours. Though we're new, this is the place of people who know it. The place of people who've been here, who've been around. There's a history to this place and to the people here. A history of families and people supporting one another in this community. The history and the place needs to be recognized and understood. And we're in the process of that. And as it goes, as the new folks in town, we're probably being watched, too. We're being noticed. And this is good. Every newcomer to town is noticed. And it's not that it's just a small town. I think that it's part of coming into a place that's known. A place that has people rooted to the place and the people and the families. It's part of coming into a place that's considered precious and valuable. And yet, it occurs to me that there's a knowing that is beyond your knowing of this area. And yeah, I think I know, uh, or I think you know what I'm going to say. And I don't say this just because I'm a pastor. I say it because I think this is the foundation of life. There's a knowing that's beyond the knowing that you have of this area and the people in the place. The knowing is this, that God is watching you. God has been watching you. God knows you better than you know this place. And this shouldn't cause you to close the blinds and hide out for fear of being seen. The fact that God is watching you and knows you is so that you can come out into the light and live in the world. I think of the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis. They had done what God told them not to do. It was all for their own good, but they did it anyway, and they hid from God. They didn't want God to know. But God knew, 
and God looked for them. He wanted them to come out so that they could be seen, the ugly and the good parts. They had to face up to what they did, but they also had to face up to who they are. They are still God's creation, loved and cared for. God still clothes them and looks out for them. That God knows you and your community better than you do is a comfort. In scripture, it's comforting because God's watching eye is not to catch you doing stuff you won't, he won't like. To think this, I think, is to miss the point. And as humans, we're pretty darn good at missing the point of things. <laughs> I think of Psalm 139. Most of this psalm talks about how there is nowhere on this green earth that God is not. In other words, no matter where we go or how we think we can hide ourselves, God is everywhere. For the psalmist, this isn't creepy, like a neighbor watching the new people on the block. God seeing and watching is a comfort. It's a watching of love. God already knows you. God created you. God created this place. Because of this, God has a great love for you and this place. And so nothing and no place on this planet will escape his notice or escape his love. Now, this doesn't mean that God's like a helicopter parent hovering around everything you do. It just means that God knows you better than you know yourself. In a world where we struggle to be known and cared for, God's watching says otherwise. When you close up or feel unnoticed, take heart. You are not just seen, you are known and loved. There's another part to this being known as I think about it. As I read scripture, I find that the truth of the matter is this. There isn't anything that surprises God. Sure, some of us sometimes think that we're beyond God. We say things that God doesn't want to hear. We do things that God doesn't want to see. But God sees and hears it all. God knows it all. I think of the book of Ecclesiastes, or as it's called in Hebrew, Kohelet. Kohelet means the teacher, and the writer of this Old Testament book has some straight shooting stuff to teach all of us. One of the main things he says is this, there's nothing new under the sun. It's like us moving to town. We're new, but we're not new. Not that we'll come and go, but there probably isn't much about us that this town hasn't already seen. It's the same with all of us as we live our lives. There isn't anything God hasn't seen. There isn't anything God hasn't already dealt with in the course of humanity. There isn't anything God hasn't forgiven. Here's what I think sometimes. We think more of ourselves than we should. Now usually that means that we tend to be conceited. But I think we can spin it and think of it differently. In our lives of independence, or our feelings that God won't like us because we're not perfect, or our sometimes too cool for God attitude that I might see and say, um, I don't know, junior high or high school students, just saying. Sometimes I think we make more of ourselves than we really should. Sometimes I think we're a little too big for our britches. Do we really think that there are things about our lives that God hasn't seen before elsewhere? Or do we really think that there are things that we do or say that God can't handle? From all the stories in scripture, there are some pretty dicey characters. And we have a God who's really not all that impressed with all the stuff we've got. We're not as bad as we think. We're not as cool as we think. There isn't anything, and I mean anything, about our lives that surprises God. Nothing that embarrasses him. Nothing. We're just passers-by in this world. We come and go. Someone before us thought God didn't care for them or know them. They were wrong, of course. People after us will think these things, too. Let me remind you today, in this letter, that you are known. You have come into a world that's known, a world that's not yours, a world that's God's place. Even a dare is God's place. It's really not yours. You, we, all of us, we're just passing through. 
we are occupying space for a time. Someone else will move in when we're done. So maybe we should open the windows a bit and let some light in. Let God in more. He already knows you. He knows this place. God's been around. We haven't. Maybe it would be good for us to just recognize that. To embrace that. To live freely because of it. So let me encourage you to stop resisting and be loved and be cared for by the God who made you, who knows you. We're all looking for it. You know it and I know it. Maybe we should let our guard down and be known. Like the people of this town who know this place, who know this small piece of history and this place in the world. Let's live in that comfort and security, knowing that God knows you even better. God knows your life, your history, and wants you to come out and live it. In defiant hope, Pastor Kyle. We'll see you soon. Have a good day being known by God.